Hey guys, it's May May, and today we're going to play with the O Snap set, um, stamp set and the O Snap companion set called Friends. And here's why. When I made the card the first time and I showed you guys um, how to use the stamp set and that sort of thing, I mentioned that this would make a cool waterfall. Well, I want to show you what I did. This is a 5x7 card, which can also be a little mini album. Check this out. When you open it up, on the inside, there is a waterfall of all of the little polaroids and you can put a picture in every one of these and the way they work out is if you're looking this way they're in the right direction and if you're looking this way they're in the right direction so they work both ways and you can put little pictures in and I think this would be the sweetest gift for someone let me tell you what I think if you ever had someone throw a party for you or throw a shower or um, put a lot of effort into something for you and you take a bunch of pictures at that function, when you send them a thank you card, you send them this and load it with pictures of the day showing all their hard work. Wouldn't that be cute? And then over here, I made this white so you could just write in the sentiment. I think this would be a cute idea for like a, a big thank you for somebody doing something big for you um, and multiple other ways to use it. So today, we're going to make this guy. Now I have already done all our cutting for us. Notice there's a little red in this one that wasn't in the other one. I want to add some red to this album. My new favorite color combination is red and turquoise and white and it's just my favorite thing right now so I'm leaning to it a lot. So here's what you're going to need. For the waterfall on the inside of the card itself, you're going to need three pieces, okay? These are cut three inches by seven and a quarter. So you need three pieces, three inches by seven and a quarter. So this piece is actually this little matted piece where I use black and white on here. This piece is cut at three and three, uh, no, three and one quarter by three and five eighths. Now, you don't necessarily have to remember this number. Just stamp your um, project, trim it out, and then measure it and make it a quarter inch wider. That's what I did here. I just stamped the picture frame and then measured it a quarter inch wider. But this one did turn out three and a quarter by three and five eighths. And then, these guys are just the matte pieces for the card. So these are four and three-fourths wide by six and three-quarters tall. And then our base is a piece of card st stock that is five inches, nope, I take that back. It is ten inches wide and seven inches tall because this will be a five by seven um, card we're making. The only thing I haven't pre-cut is that white piece for the front stamp for the um, frame. I just missed that one, so we'll cut it when we get to it. Let's start with these guys. This is the stamp set I'm using, and I want to tell you what I did. This is, um, in case you don't know, this is my stamp set that I designed. It's available on my Etsy store, and there'll be a link for it below. Um, there are only uh, like 11 of these left and five of the companion set, which we're using today too, this guy. Um, so you want to grab those. They will come back in stock, but you guys bought them so fast, which is a huge blessing. So there may be a little lag time before they're in the shop, but be sure you go ahead and grab them while you can. Okay, here's what I did. I measured, and we'll pull mine over here. I told you, I just keep mine on this big old block. I like this block for this, and I keep it. So what I did was I measured this stamp here, and then I wanted mine to land a certain way in the card. And the reason I'm taking the time to show you how I planned this out is so if you have another stamp you want to do something like this with, this will kind of show you how to get that done. I wanted them to land so that you could see the sentiments pretty well on each of the other ones. Um, whenever the waterfall is laying out, instead of just being stacked kind of funny. So what I did was I measured the height of the stamp plus this little guy in the middle. So I added that piece to here, which for me, I ended up doing um, three quarters of an inch in the middle. This will make sense as we get going. But by adding that three quarters of an inch here in the middle, it allowed this to kind of stagger to the right height. That may be confusing. But if you're doing one on your own and you ever try to design these things, that'll help you do that. So these are the right height, and now we need to score them. Now for scoring, here's what I did. I did not stress too much about the actual um, numbers. I brought my paper over and brought it down, and I knew that my first um, frame needed to bend at three and a quarter. I know that's where that first bend needs to be because of the height of the frame stamp. Then I moved up three quarters of an inch to give myself that waterfall, okay? So now I know I have my first frame, my gap between the waterfall, and then my second frame. So basically we're scoring at three and a quarter and four. That's it on both of these. And I'm using a very, very thick cardstock. Would you guys believe I'm totally out of white 65 pound cardstock? So this is white 110 pound. So 
I have to score it really good. And I still don't get a great bend on these. It's a little bit wonky, but I can deal with that. So I'm just doing a nice hard score in here. All right, so now these guys are ready. Now I have I did not bend them yet because I need to stamp them. So I don't want to fight that bend. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp them without folding them so that it'll be much easier in the end. All right, so I have my big block and I have some Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I'm going to ink this guy up. Now I want to show you, this guy's pretty um, wide, but your ink pad will fit across it so you can ink it all in one shot. But I like to go up and back a couple of times because I have been known to miss those edges and corners. All right, so the first one, I'm going to stamp at the top. Let me make sure you guys can see this. So here's my score line. I'm going to let this be slightly above my score line. I hope I don't get into the frame for you guys. Sorry if I do. And stamp that one down. I do a little wiggle motion, make sure I get it on there good. So I got that one on the top. Now I'm going to come down and do the same thing on the bottom one. Okay. Bring it down low. Make sure I'm in the frame. I'll try to keep doing that for you guys. All right. I feel like this one's very crooked. I've done something. I turned that one. Yep. But I'm not worried about it. <laughs> I just don't worry about that little bit off. I think people are going to be so amazed when they see it, they're not going to worry about it. Now I want to show you. This piece will now fold over here. Okay. So when we turn this one over, we want to make sure that we just turn it toward us like this. And when we do that, we know that they will land, they will land straight um, when you fold them. I'll show you what I mean. Now I'm going to stamp to the top again. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fold this one and show you how this works, okay? We stamped these two in the same direction. We flipped it over and stamped these two in the same direction. So now we can fold them on our score lines, lining them up nice and neatly. Okay, and then I'm going to bring this one back and fold it on its score line. And I'll show you how this works. So on the front of our card, or inside our card, it will look like this. So this one is facing in the right direction. We open it up. This one is facing the right direction. This one is facing the right direction. And when we flip it, now this one is facing in the right direction. So you want to make sure when you stamp it, you stamp top, bottom, flip over top, bottom. Then all your frames will be going in the right direction in your book. All right, I'm going to go through, I'm going to stamp these other two, and then we'll come back together and we'll do a little more stamping. So now we are all stamped up. These three are ready to go. And I told you this time I was going to bring some red in or a different color, definitely that red. And what I'm going to do first is this is my stamp cleaner. I got this from Close to My Heart a long time ago when I was a consultant for them. And I have it over here to the side because I just like to have it where I can clean my stamps in between. And we're fixing to go crazy. I have my Oh Snap Friends set. And then I also have my O oh Snap set here. And what I'm going to do is make sure I have the little backers peeled off. And I'm going to use all of these sentiments in any old way. It does not matter. I have some Love Letter Red Memento ink. I'll put this where you guys can see it. It is this one. I love this Love Letter. It's so pretty. And then a little stamp block. Okay. And I'm just going to peel off a sentiment. This one says, take a picture. It'll last longer. And I'm just going to put it onto my block. And what I think is funny is if you use all of these little sentiments, it'll be cute when you go through your pictures to decide which one you want to put on which um, frame, on which little saying that you have. Press that down. How cute. Okay. And then I'm going to come up here to my stamp cleaner and clean it off. You guys know how to use these guys? The stamp cleaner. You clean it on one side, do the other side. And then it's ready to go back and it's nice and clean. I have promised myself that I was not going to let my stamps get dirty. Like I have ruined so many stamps. I really did. I had this stamp set that I made my, for myself and I ruined it by not cleaning it. And I'm not going to do that anymore. So I just keep a rag or my stamp cleaner close and I clean in between stampings. And I've noticed that these look just brand new. My other ones, ugh, they were horrible. So nice and clean. It takes two seconds to do that. And let me show you. I even use one of these guys. This is one of those chamois cloth things. Look at the ink on there. 
and the Baker's Wine. <laughs> Everything sticks to them. But if I don't have a stamp cleaner, I'll just get a cloth and clean them. Anything's better than not cleaning them. That's what I have discovered. And it doesn't matter what stamp it is. I've, I've ruined a lot of stamps by leaving ink, especially when, in my stays on days where all I used was stays on ink. Oh, I ruined so many of them that way. And this to me is fun, picking up stamps, inking them up. Just really gets that um, that instant gratification feel out. I just love to do this. So this one says, say cheese. Oops. I'm also loving this little stamp block I got in my paper pumpkin set for last month. They sent me this little um, Stampin' Up stamp block and I have used it for everything. It's a little thicker than those ones you get at the Dollar Tree set or the Dollar Bin section at like Michael's. So you have a little more room for your fingers. I don't have little fingers. So those those little skinny ones didn't work real good for me. But this one works really good. Because I get a little more room to hold it. I love how this is looking. I love this red ink. You cannot say you're not getting your money's worth out of these with this project. <laughs> Because you're using every one of them. And you don't have to use every one of them. I just think it's neat. They all go with pictures. They, there's no telling what pictures you can stick with these. Strike a pose. And we'll do worth a thousand words. Here. And then we just have one more to do. So I'm just going to stamp it. I'm going to continue doing exactly what I'm doing. Just using every sentiment from both of these sets until I don't need any more. And we will come back when they're all done. Alright, so I've stamped everything and it is time to put adhesive on these guys. And I'm treating these just like they were an actual mini album. The reason is if you're going to take the time to put photos in something, you want it to be something that's going to hold up for a long time. So I'm using the tape that I would use if I were making a mini album. So be sure you do the same thing. I'll put a link to this tape below if you're interested. This is my favorite sticky tape. It's a very good price. It is, um, you get a lot for your money and it holds like nobody's business. I will say this, it is not repositionable. Please know you cannot put this on and move it around. Once you stick it down, it is stuck. Alright, so these have their adhesive on them and they are ready to go. And now, I'm going to do some more stamping while I've got all my stuff out. Did you notice on this page that I have all the sentiments in the background? I think that looks really cute. And the reason I did it is because this is the paper. It's just plain polka dot. And I thought it would be really cute to have all of that on that back page. So basically, I'm creating my own designer paper using the stamps that I'm using in the card. So I have my red ink still. I want to do it with red this time instead of the black since we've already seen the black in action. And let's see, I'm going to come over here and take any old stamp set. doesn't matter. I love the one that says snapshot for this. And this is what I do. I just randomly stamp these stamps a little on the paper. Some of them are going to be off the paper a bit doesn't matter. Remember, I'm going to cover up the center a little bit, but I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to cover it up, so I'm just going to do a bunch of stamping with each one of these dudes. Then clean it and put it up. Now I'm going to do good times. I think that's a good one for the front. So I'll stamp it over here. Then I'm going to go back to the other set, the O Snap set, the original one, and use the one that says Smile. I'm just going to stamp it here and there. One thing I catch myself doing, if I'm not careful, is I'll get really fast and not do my rock. And if I don't rock it, I'll sometimes get some weak spots in my stamp. So don't get so fast that you don't get good stamps. Kind of slow your roll a little bit <laughs> and make sure you're stamping well. That's what my kids would tell me. Slow your roll, Mom. Alright, then strike a pose, which I think is a cute sentiment. 
Then I like the sentiment that says shake it. Shake it came from, if you have a Polaroid picture, you always shake it to make it develop. But it works so good if you're making um, shaker cards to put shake it on the front of your shaker card. And then whoever gets it knows that you're supposed to shake it and make it work. And if you're doing a bunch of things where maybe people were dancing, wouldn't this be cute if you had this as the sentiment in like a dance party kind of thing? Shake it. I think it'd be cute. Notice how I'm avoiding that middle because I'm not real concerned about it because that's where we're going to put that picture frame. Now, the last thing I did on the front was I took the two sentiments from the friend set, the companion set. I took the, not the sentiment, but the images. This is the smiley face. I just thought he was cute. I just kind of put him here and there willy-nilly. The trick for making these look right is to have some on the page and some off the page. Remember that. Half of them, it still makes sense, but that's how you get the designer paper look is to not let them all just be on the page. Run some of them on and off. So there's the smiley face, and I'm going to do the same thing with the heart. So I cut out the little front frame that we didn't have earlier, and I'm going to get that one ready to go. And I think this, the sentiment, a great day, is perfect for this kind of gift that I'm making because this is just saying, you know, we had a great day when you threw that party for me. I really appreciate it. That's so nice of you. So I think that's cute. So now this guy is going to go on here. And you know what I'm going to use? My glue dots, because I'm liking them. I just, um, I kind of like the idea of not having to use my ATG every time. I'm still getting used to this, y'all. Do you see that? I do like them, but I have to get used to the rolly effect. There's one. Okay, so I have some glue dots. I'll put that onto my red border piece. those down and then I'm going to do the same for here so there's those guys and it will go like this I really like this blue and red and white together now, for this part, I'm not going to use the glue dots. I'm going to use my sticky tape again because, like I said, I'm going to assemble this as if it were a mini album. So I'm going to use the adhesive I would use for something I'd want to last for a long time. How many of you guys make 5x7 cards? Do you only stick to A2s? You ever make any 5x7s? I rarely do, but you know what I like about them? I love the larger canvas we get with a 5x7. I don't know why I don't do more of them, because I really like having all that space. All right, so I have my sticky tape on the back, and I forgot to score our card base, so I need to do that. And I have a little friend in my craft room today who is a sick boy. He's home from school, so Joseph is here with me. Hi. Oh, do you hear his sick voice? How are you feeling? I guess okay. You don't really feel bad? You just sound bad? Yeah. He sounds pretty bad. He doesn't have a fever, and he's taking some medicine, and we may end up in the doctor tomorrow. We're going to give it one day with some regular medicine, and then we're going to head to the doctor. Sound good? Yeah. Want to get a shot? No. No. <laughs> All right. I'll be up in just a minute for you. All right. So now we're going to put this one on the inside, just like this. So we'll stick this down. I probably seem like a bad mom because I'm in my craft room and he's sick, but I promise I'm taking care of him. He came down to ask me what's for lunch, so he's clearly not feeling too bad. I'm going to go make him some lunch when we finish. All right. So now I'm going to stick this down on the inside. If you're interested in this paper collection I'm using, it's a Martha Stewart set. Let me see if I can get the name of it. It's this collection. It's called, um, I'm looking... You probably see it, and I don't see it. Just says designer paper pad. Doesn't have a name. It's really cute, and it's got some glitter stuff in it too. I got it for four ninety nine at TJ Maxx at one point in time. See all the pretty colors? I like it. So if you're wondering about that one, if I can find a link to it, I'll put it below. All right, now it's time to assemble our waterfall, which I'm super excited about. Now, one thing I really like to do is score these down really well. So burnish them in place because I think they lay flatter. But also remember, if you were using a thinner cardstock than I am today, you wouldn't have any lift really. It would be a lot better, but I'm having to use 110 pound, which is really thick. I love it, but it's really thick. 
I would I would prefer using 65 pound for this. I think I, I folded that one very well. Okay, now this is where I get real technical, and that is I just eyeball this section. I kind of decide where I want my bottom to be, and I just kind of do it like this, and then the second piece is going to go right above that, something like that. Oh, I have it upside down. Make sure you pay attention to that. So the next piece will go right above it, something like that, and then your final piece will go above that. So I just kind of felt around to see where I wanted these, and you've got some movement on here. you got a little bit um, of wiggle room, so it's going to be something like that, so I'm going to start peeling the backer off of here. I ended up putting about a little less than half an inch between them if I remember correctly last night. I didn't measure or anything, but you can do that. I'm just the queen of, I'm going to eyeball this and get it done. Alright, so I'm going to stick this one here. And I don't feel like that's in the center. Before I stick that, I'm going to take a look at it from here. that one down and I'll stick this one down and I'm just going to eyeball it if you want to you can kind of hold it this way and get your distance something like that before I squish it I'm going to check it yep and now this guy So there is your waterfall in place on the inside of the card and see how everything is lined up correctly. So when you flip them, all of your pictures show correctly. And you even could put one here if you wanted to. That'd be super cute too, or a sentiment or something. And then, like I did on my card, on the inside I put that white sheet. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that in this one because it's just kind of a demo for you guys. And then when I get ready to send it to somebody, I can do it then. So there you go, a waterfall mini card, mini album card. What do you think? I think this is super cute. Now, you could use this same technique and put this into an actual mini album. There'd be nothing to it to do that. So you end up with some really, really cute real estate for some pictures. All right, guys, there's that one. Let me bring the other one back over. Here's the other one. So we have two that are very similar, but a little bit different. And like I said, it used my two stamp sets and we just created a cute little waterfall. If you're interested in the stamp sets, there'll be a link below. Those are called Oh Snap and Oh Snap Friends. So be sure to catch them while I've got them. They will come back in stock. So don't worry if you miss them out, I will put them back. But for now, there's about 11 of one and five of the other in there. All right, guys, I appreciate you coming along with me on this fun little project today, and I'll see you on Friday, and we will continue on our crafty journey. Thanks so much, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.